system for holding the camera. So what we have is an auto pole by Manfrotto and this beautiful little invention on the ceiling. It's got a sloped ceiling there. So that holds that up there and that wedges between the ceiling and the floor. And then off of that, there's an arm that holds a camera. And we've got this little thing on here just to, just to steady it because it is, can be a bit rocky. So I have to make sure I don't bash into that. But I don't use a tripod anymore so that it gives me a bit more space. Anyway, what? What I'm working on today is a bluebell scene. And I'm just gonna start working on that foreground, foreground now. I'm uh, gonna show you how I'm gonna do those sort of grass, I'll do the grass and do the bluebells, obviously, because that's what the lesson is. <laughs> well, let's just get started, shall we? Once again, foreground's dry. Um, those of you that know how I work will know that I'm now going to put the darker areas into this grass here. So I'm going to go with a mid green and I'm using fan brush, which is a size one, series 2055, Rosemary and Co. And I'm just going to just put in those darker areas where I can see them. Really, it's just going to be a a general a general um, covering here, just over the whole the whole area. It's quite quite even in colour. There are no no bits that are much darker or lighter than others. So so this uh, paint, the consistency hasn't been thinned at all. I'm not using any medium either. So that's just as it comes out of the tube. And the further back you are, the less contrast there is. That's why I'm not going particularly dark. There are some areas at the front that are um, a bit darker where you do have that contrast. But this bit here is generally less contrasty. And then as we move forward, we can start to, or as we move into the foreground, we can start to darken up just slightly. So that's now the generalised darkening. All I need to do now, starting with the background and moving forward, is put in some of the highlights. We're going to put the bluebells in at the end. I'm just going to put the grass highlights in first, um, right up to the front here. So let's start working on that in the background right now. So I've mixed up some phthalo green yellow shade, some lemon yellow, titanium white and that's given me a really nice strong leaf green. I'm just going to go over the side, just right up to the side of that path there. Using the fan brush still, I'm just dabbing with that front edge. So what I'm doing is I touch the panel and then I sort of pull downwards a little bit. And that gives you the feeling of grass. Actually what it does is it puts loads of little vertical strokes on the, on the panel. So it's perfect for doing grass that is a bit further out. We're gonna to need to change the technique as we come nearer to the foreground, but this is just perfect for for doing the uh, further areas of grass.
as we move down into the foreground area, we need to start putting in more details. That blanket effect is fine for grass that is further back, but we need only to change things a little bit as we come into the foreground. So I'm going to move over to the series 771, and that's the size one. And I'm going to try and start building up individual blades of grass. Although, strictly speaking, I suppose it's not grass, is it, that we're painting? What would those bits be called on, on the bluebells, the green? Okay, so I'm calling it grass. It's not grass. Not grass. Silly boy, it's actually their leaves. The uh, plant, perennial plant that grows from a bulb, produces three to six linear leaves, all growing from the base. Yeah, you've learned something else. So, let's do some of these. Let's start painting this grass. <laughs> yeah. So, now what I've done, still need to lighten that area up where the, the, the sunlight's shining on the, on the leaves. But I'll do that afterwards. I'm going to start working now while I've got this colour mixed in the foreground. Now, using the rigger brush, I've thinned the paint down a little bit now, not too much. I'm using white spirit to thin that paint. Then I'm just going to do a variation really of, of um, leaves here. <laughs> So once again, we're going to start in the background and make our way forward. Different techniques from the background to the foreground. So we'll start at the back first and we're going to use the fan brush, series 2055. This is a size one. Make sure it's nice and clean first. And up all the old paint. So the colour I'm going to start with, I've mixed in some um, cerulean blue and some dioxazine purple and just a little bit of titanium white. And I'm just going to, I've got hardly any of it on the brush here really. I'm just gonna dab that brush against the panel there and it's just gonna give us the smallest little dots. Now one of the things that I have noticed is they seem to be more in clusters rather than just generally, you know, a general coating over the whole thing, especially in the distance there. So I just need to bear that in mind, really. And the colour in the distance also doesn't need to change that much because it's not in the sun or none of it's in the sun, it's all in the shade. It's all going to be of a similar, similar colour, the bluebells. Okay, and then as we come sort of nearer, I'm going to change the brush because that's, that fan I was using is a little bit too um, regular. And I'm going to change it to just an older brush. And this has been chopped around a little bit more, so it's, as you can see, it's, it is less regular. And that should give us um, more sort of independent little dots of paint rather than the more on mass. Now the colour once again is going to be similar to uh, the background. S certainly in the dark areas or the shaded areas I think probably what we can do is maybe add a little bit more of a pink to it. Okay. 
Now, as we come nearer to the foreground, I'm going to move over now and start doing the blue brails a bit more individually. So going back to a rigger brush, Series 771. And this is the size 2. Um, so in this area, it's probably not as much in the sun. So I'm not going to change the colour too much. And this area in the shade here is all going to be very similar blue to what we have here. But then as we come into this area of sun here, uh, the colours change and it's much more of a pink. But we're going to do the blue around here first, then we'll do the pink and then we'll go into the lower part here where we change to that blue again. So I'm using the very point of the brush and I'm kind of going down almost in a, a, a sort of a downward motion as I make contact with the panel. And what that does is it gives you a, almost like a bluebell shape, I suppose. Let's see if I can show you on here. So what I'm doing is a, a downward mark. Can you see what that does? It gives you like that, well, that is a bluebell shape, I suppose, isn't it? Or about as near as we can get it without actually having to draw the things. So there you go, that's the basic technique. You can do it very gently. And so we're building up on this now. And uh, I'll now sh just show you how I'm going to put the highlights in. So we are going to clean that brush. I'll we'll take off the majority of that purpley blue paint. And I'm just adding a bit more white into the mix. So we've got the cerulean blue, the dioxazine purple. Just adding details, just here and there. Now with the ones in the very foreground, I'll do that a bit differently and I'll show you how I'll do that in a moment. Right, so now we're gonna work on the lighter shades of this area that is in the sun here. And although they're bluebells, the, ch the color does vary quite considerably from the blue. I mean, what I've got here now is more of a pink and I've managed to do that with permanent rose, titanium white, a little dash of cadmium orange and a small dash of cadmium red. And that's given us this nice sort of rich pink colour. And I'm just going to thin it down slightly and I'm going to run it alongside the left edge of most of these darker blobs of paint that I've put in, these darker areas. Don't worry about being totally accurate. Apart from my signature, that is finished. It's taken a little bit longer than I would have liked this one, but there's a quite a lot of detail in it. Um, not a great deal of sky, obviously. The more sky there is in a picture, the generally the quicker it is as well. Hope you liked that. If you did, please like and subscribe. Um, oh, by the way, uh, in the link in the description below, there is um, a new web address because I'm 
currently having a website made. Um, so please go and sign up and you'll, you know, join the newsletter and what have you. Um, and I think that's probably it for today. So um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.